Good afternoon and hello to all the familiar faces out there and for those that don't know me, my name is Rebecca Bartley. I'm a research scientist at CSIRO based in Brisbane and today I'm going to be presenting on our first wet seasons of data from our NEST project that is quantifying the effectiveness of gully remediation on water quality, specifically on gullies in the Burdekin catchment. We have a large and diverse team working on this project from several organisations including CSIRO, Queensland's The City, uh, NQ Dry Tropics and Greening Australia and I'd really like to acknowledge all of the team for their contributions to this project. So first up, why are we doing this work? Well many of you will be familiar with the large legacy work largely around using sediment tracing that has determined that of all the sediment that gets to the end of catchments and to the marine system, about 40% of that comes from gully erosion. However, the actual land area that is uh, under gully erosion is less than 0.1%. This is kind of good in that if we actually can find some techniques that work, we actually have a relatively small area to treat. However, we don't actually know a lot about gully erosion full stop, but we even understand even less about what we can do to fix them up. So this NEST project is specifically working alongside the Reef Trust program, uh, Reef Trust 4, but also Reef Trust 2, have invested a considerable amount of money into remediating gully landscapes. This project is to try and obtain some of the quantitative data, particularly around water quality, improvement after the gully remediation has occurred. Many of you would understand that there are broadly two types of gullies in the Burdekin catchment or more broadly in the reef catchments and they're the large alluvial gullies that are often adjacent to our large river systems and they're big and enormous and difficult to deal with and I've left them with Andrew Brooks who'll be talking after this presentation. What we're working on in this project are the smaller but more ubiquitous linear hill slope gullies that are very common in grazed areas, particularly on granite diorite and sodic soils. So where are we working? We're working on four uh, commercial grazing properties, uh, two in the Upper Burdekin catchment, Virginia Park Station and Meadowvale Station. These are actually long-term CSIRO research sites and because they've had investment from the Paddock to Reef program in terms of gully monitoring in the past, we're continuing on those properties. We also have two new properties, uh, Strathbogie in the Bogie catchment and Minivale in the Don. Strathbogie is an NQ Geotropics Reef Trust 4 site and Minivale is a Greening Australia Reef Trust 4 site. So we've got a, a nice diverse mixture of property types and locations across the Burdekin. At each of the sites we've got a consistent setup. So we've tried to um, find two gullies within the suite of gullies that are being treated and we have one treatment and one control. So at the control site there is no treatment. The treatments that are occurring depend on each of the properties and the relationship and discussions that have occurred between um, the ex extension provider uh, and the property owner. So at the case of Virginia Park, in the treatment here is a number of stick traps uh, as well as fencing off of the gully head cut itself. At each of the sites we also have consistent instrumentation and measurement techniques. So uh, we have been using the Zebedee laser scanner, terrestrial laser scanner uh, and LIDAR where we have available to quantify the terrain. We also have um, detailed in-stream water quality sample uh, samplers that measure depth, velocity and turbidity and in the case of the treatment sites they collect uh, sediments and nutrients for water quality analysis. This is the Minivale site and you can see they've had a much more intensive treatment on ground treatment regime and they've put in a lot of coir logs and some stick traps in here and there's also been partial fencing off of some of the gully head cuts. So this is the water quality monitoring instrumentation again that's consistent in at all sites. So on the left is the treatment uh, set up with the full ISCO sampler 
and on the right, because of affordability, we've put in a cut-down version of the auto sampler that only collects um, one sample per event, but we can cross-calibrate with the, um, the other instruments so that we have consistent uh, measurements throughout events. This, um, the first slide of what we've found so far, so we've only actually had one wet season to report on, but it's been quite fascinating. So overall, all four properties are actually in either C or D condition, and we also have webcams set up at each site predominantly to try and catch out cows that try and get in the fences and chew wires, but it's also been really valuable for understanding what the landscape looks at, like uh, through the season. And this is photos from Strathbogie Station. You can see on the right here at the top what the landscape looked like prior to the beginning of the wet season last year. And it's pretty scary really. There's not a lot of grass available for anything to eat and um, the only uh, ground cover there in the recent surveys is forbs, not even much Indian cooches growing. You can see how over the wet season with the bottom photo on the right that the pasture does um, improve and return, but this is only after the rainfall. So it's those early pre-wet season events um, where the land, land condition is most important because that's where you get your first flush and your high loss of both sediments and nutrients in this landscape. You can see from the um, video on the left that this site actually runs a bit like chocolate sauce and after the events you can see that the sensors uh, actually flatline when they come back in terms of the tel telemeter data and we often think that something's gone wrong but we've now realised that's just the burial of the sediments there's so much material moving in these gullies. So what else have we found at this site? Um, this particular gully moved about 18 metres in one wet season which is extraordinary. It's on a very fine grained alluvium decomposed basalt here so it's it, the material is about less than five micron and you can see from the DMs a difference here and the dark green at the end of the tail is where the gully has moved to just in one wet season. They did get Cyclone Debbie move across this site but they also had Cyclone Debbie move across our Don River catchment site and it didn't move anywhere near as much as this particular gully. So this is identified for us, this is a very active area and we didn't expect to see this, so this is quite a new finding. What else have we found? Well, that porous check dams, um, PCDs if you're reading the report at any stage, or more colloquially known as stick traps, do seem to have a greater survival success in some of these gullies and, uh, compared to coir logs. However, it does very much depend on the installation process and some of the learnings from this project have been around uh, how to install adequately these types of structures. An important story uh, for me was when I worked for New South Wales State Government uh, 20 years ago doing a lot of stream bank remediation works. And increasingly any of the works that failed were actively hidden uh, from view of everyone, mainly not to embarrass the minister at the time. But that, I think, led to a lot of future failures in remediation because that information wasn't shared. I think it's really important here that anything that doesn't work, people know about it as soon as they can so we can not do it again in, in the same situation and improve in our understanding because we just really don't have the time um, with the Great Barrier Reef in the state it's in. We really need to fast track and learn as much as we can to get successes and runs on the board. What else have we found? Um, that porous check dams, when used in combination with stock exclusion, seem to have a, a really good effect on cover, uh, both percent and biomass amount of cover within gullies. There's been a statistically significant difference. And this has been um, well documented with the extension of the Paddock to Reef program that Scott Wilkinson and Aaron Horden have been taking carriage of over the last seven or eight years at Virginia Park. So you can see um, these photos through time from 2010 through to March 2017 that since these stick traps have been installed, they've slowed the water down, dropped out sediment and seed behind them and slowly um, 
that has uh, built vegetation up on both the, the walls of the gully as within the as well as within the bed of the gully. Fencing stock out of gullies is really important because we've found we're struggling to get uh, an effect from improved grass cover on the hill slopes, but we're definitely seeing an effect within the gully walls. And you can see with the photo on the left that stock do like to hang out in these gully systems. And when they're in there, any new green pick they'll take. So we really need them out as much as we can. Acknowledging this is a really quite a difficult thing to do for a lot of land managers because these are very dissected landscapes. And once you start fencing off one gully, you know, it can quickly snowball and become quite cost, um, well, costly. So we're working with partners now to work out, you know, when, when it's suitable to do this and when other more innovative techniques may be required. We've also found that we've got really diverse amounts of erosion coming off uh, these landscapes, even though we've got quite similar soil types amongst our NESP uh, treatment sites, we're getting a really diverse range of erosion in terms of tonnes per metre per year. And we're picking this up by comparing the DMs a difference from one year to the next. And this one here is actually um, just showing Virginia Park Station. But um, some of the gullies may look terrible, but they're actually not moving much at all, whereas others are contrib contributing a lot of sediment. So up uh, near 0.8 tonnes per metre per year is... Um, is a bit of a problem. In terms of the water quality response, so these are four graphs showing the box plot comparing control and treatment. I'm a little nervous of showing you because this is really only one year of data and I'm guessing this is beginner's luck, but you'll see for all of the properties, the control treatment is the box plot on the left and the treatment is the box plot on the right. Virginia Park and Minivale, the top two images are the sites that it had treatment in before the wet season. So this suggests that these sites are statistically improving already. Um, the, the TSS concentrations are lower than the control site. We didn't see that at Minivale and Strathbogie where the treatments hadn't yet been put in. However, I think there was a lot of luck in here and I'd like to see several more wet seasons of data before we you know, yell this from the rooftops too much because after running a 12-year a trial at Virginia Park Station, I know that things can switch around a lot between wet and dry years. But anyway, it's a good start. We'll hang on to it as long as we can. And in terms of the particle size data, some really interesting insights, again, that um, for several of the sites, including Virginia Park and Strathbogie, there's quite fine material coming off here, so down to less between 5 and 10 micron material. Uh, Strathbogie in particular is down below 5 micron, and that's telling me that uh, given no obstructions, so no dams, that this sediment would be getting out to the Great Barrier Reef, um, at least into uh, the marine system to be taken out in plumes. Anything greater than... 16 or so micron from the work from Zoe Bainbridge and Steve Lewis has t told us that it's unlikely to get very far in the marine system and it's not a, as great a concern. So we're really focusing on that fine material. And, um, yeah, each gully site is quite different. Some of the challenges we're seeing is that because we're using multiple techniques in this study, because we're using water quality, um, particle size analysis, so we're looking at different terrain uh, analysis techniques that they can give you slightly contradicting in some cases uh, answers. For example, this top graph here is showing you that at Virginia Park, our treatment sites are actually giving a lot more erosion um, in the two years that we've studied compared to the control site, whereas for the water quality, it's the other way around. It's showing us that the very fine material is actually lower at the treatment site than it is at the control site and that's because the graph on the bottom is just fine material the graph at the top where you're using terrain analysis is total sediment load so it's your fine and your coarse so it could be there's a lot more coarse coming off but the water quality is actually better so it's really important for us to use multiple lines of evidence and we're trying to work through what are the best techniques for others to use in in looking at uh, evaluating their improvements from on-ground investments over time 
So we'll do the hard yucca and work out which ones are the best techniques because it, it is expensive and then hopefully we'll be able to make some recommendations soon as to what everyone should be using. So as I said, it's really important to use multiple lines of evidence. Um, these NEST projects are really about trialling and testing which what are the most appropriate measurement techniques for evaluating success and we need to trial that in different landscapes. And at the moment, um, we've got two different soil types. We're mainly working on Granodora and as well as one Verticel site. And that's been um, really helpful in understanding the diverse range of responses we can get uh, in terms of both erosion and the response to remediation. Just quickly, some of the other aspects of uh, our project. I didn't talk about particulate nutrients, but we are measuring that where we can. Nutrients are a little bit more challenging in a field situation because you do need to recover the samples within one to two days. But where we can, we've been able to share some of those results and we'll share data from the next wet season to people like um, Alex and Joe Burton at, at the city who are working on understanding particulate nutrients. This presentation has been largely around the effectiveness, which to me is, is the difficult bit where we have very little data, but we're also trying to look at the various costs of the program so that by the end of the project, we will have cost effectiveness metrics for these sites. The good news is as we um, are going to help out in the MIPS and we have a contract to extend largely what we've done at the NEST project, um, a slightly cut down version to the Mount Wickham uh, project site for the, for the Burdekin MIP and uh, that will be nice to bring another site in so we'll have five sites and that's a slightly different soil type is my understanding so that will add some really good value. Next year we're really hoping to start working on how we can scale these results um, up um, in terms of we've got individual sites. What does this mean now when you have lots of gullies on an individual property and then lots of properties within a catchment? So um, to help us do that, we've got uh, quite a few partners. We're working with the University of Sunshine Coast, um, Queenslander City, and we have a new PhD student at ANU as well where we have um, several different terrain analysis techniques from uh, the laser scanners, the Zebedees, we have ground-based photogrammetry, the aerial photogrammetry, we have some drone work going on and also LIDAR and we're trying to work out which technique is best for representing gullies over these larger scales. In terms of our extension, uh, most of the, the work with uh, our community partners has been through the Reef Trust project where it was very exciting to hold the first Reef Trust Erosion Control Forum in Rockhampton in August this year and uh, the next one next year I think is going to be in um, Cooktown. So this is where we've had 50 or so people from all the regional bodies and, and um, delivery partners out talking about gullies and where we can share the results from the NEST program directly uh, at, at these forums. So that's been a, um, a great partnership there. And that's all I have. If you have any questions, happy for you to email me or come and see me at the forum. And um, thanks for listening.